So just for the intro, I'm going to use a, a kind of a PowerPoint just as an intro, and then we'll hand it over to Daryl. But welcome to our COP. Um, it's a technology enhanced learning community of practice. Um, this meeting, uh, we've kind of, we tend to do annual themes and this chat GPT sort of GPT, if you will, sort of AI mixture is this theme sort of how this year it's rolling. And so we kind of using that as a theme and um, Daryl is coming in to talk about artificial creativity and the AI art tool workshop and how that can kind of be used. We're so blessed to have Daryl as part of our COP, but out of all three of us, uh, by far, Daryl is the more expert of the, he presents more in the COP than we do because he's just got way more experience and knowledge than we do. So we are super blessed to have him as a member of COP to give us validity. Um, we'd like to first acknowledge um, the traditional owners. We acknowledge the traditional owners, uh, custodians of the land on which we meet and pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. And being a COP, we're all in different locations. So we try to do our best to, in all the different locations, acknowledge the traditional custodians. So just quickly, quickly, you know, we are the community of learning, COP, technology enhanced learning, COP. We're really looking at how to improve learning, but it's a very broad scope. Um, and we tend to operate on themes, but really is how does, you know, learning and teaching and education grow, mature, learn when it comes to technological advancements. So yeah, we, we have com different themes each year and a changing, growing for, because as technology changes, so must our COP <laughs> to reflect that. Um, just as a reminder, all episodes are on YouTube. We have a whole YouTube channel. Uh, he should not have that second one with my face. That's bad. That's bad. You should always have better looking people at the beginning. But yeah, all our COP stuff is put on YouTube. I'm Dr. Robert Vandenberg. Um, I'm actually a developmental psychologist that does um, a lot of background in learning theory and really looking at how this technology and learning theory works together is an interest of mine. I, uh, I don't know, like, I don't speak about myself. So that's me. Michael, when he reads this, he tells you all about me. I don't feel comfortable telling you all the things about me, uh, but I am in Bundaberg, I will tell you that. And I'm a pretty ardent uh, speak high on Bundaberg individual. But I get to say things about Michael now because he normally talks about me. So Michael is an award-winning technology strategist, communicator committed to fostering thoughtfulness and technology for students, educators, and the general public. He's currently associate professor at ICT in SET, and he won the very prestigious AAUT award for teaching excellence, which is above me. That's why he's last, he's more important. In his spare time, Michael runs K-12 engagement sessions all over the country. You'll see him quite often anywhere and in public around youth doing great things that bring tech to youth. Our guest speaker, as I said earlier, was Daryl Clary. Um, he's really probably um, the most hands-on clinical educator I've ever been uh, involved with in education in my 30 year plus career. Um, a lot of us talk about doing things. Michael is the one who does things and talks least about it. Uh, I just think it's a joy to be able to interact with him. And I've never been in a location with him where I don't walk away with significantly greater understanding and learning, but it will be a ride. You need to hang on because he does know what he's doing and he will be talking through it. And don't be afraid to stop him because his level of understanding, you know, you slow him down if you need to because his expertise is unfathomable. And we're, it's just great to have him be a guest and share his expertise with us. And I promise you, you will learn a lot in this session. So, um, the three CQ amigos. Sorry, Daryl and Jim. So I threw this one in for you, Robert. I always finish with a with a silly photo. Daryl actually made this photo a couple of years ago when he and myself and Jim Picton were doing a lot of those trips around the country. And one of our colleagues uh, christened us as the three amigos. And so Daryl did a little Photoshop for us. So this is the three CQ amigos. It was the silliest photo I could find, Daryl. I thought it was appropriate. <laughs> 
Uh, I like it. Anyway, I can probably beat you today with silly pictures, so we should be fine then, hey? All right. So, so my turn, I guess. All right. Um, I shall just share the screen and make sure I will share the sound as well. And voila, hopefully. Oh, you're joking. Max wants a password for everything. Hello. Give me one second. Maybe my headphones are playing up. We, no, we got you back now. We got you back. Oh, man, just a glitch in the matrix. So is my screen shared there okay? Yeah, it's good. We can see the uh, yeah. ABC News uh, article and we can hear you. Excellent. I thought that might be an interesting place to start. And um, firstly, I'm no expert in this field. I think we've all been there where we actually um, send Michael an email and saying, I just found this. I thought it was interesting. And next minute you're running a community practice, but that's okay. I do have a real interest in this area and I thought I'd start on some because it's really interesting. I'm not sure if people saw this. Uh, this guy won the actual Sony World Photography Award for this photo and it's actually AI generated. Um, and that's what I'm going to go through today, a bit about what, why, how. Um, with the how part, uh, as uh, Rob was saying, I do go through things quickly. I've learned though, at the end of this, we'll be able to give you this, which is and I think this could be my uh, little thing that I do in future for the for the co-op. I'll keep this updated, so you know what we can do. So with AI, you can you you know, Michael was talking about silly pictures. I um I thought I'd just try one of the cheap AIs and just grab a random photo of somebody like this, and ask it to generate a cyborg from it, and I was not disappointed. Okay, so there you go, Michael. That'll be your next silly picture, hey. All right. So why AI art? Um, it's mainly been used at the moment for lots of silly things, you know, making memes or, or doing anime. My real interest in it was to actually see if I can use it for imagery in what I do and what I teach. I use imagery a lot and I'm going to give you three really quick examples in two minutes to show you where I was going. Now, the interesting thing was after all of this, I found none of the AI art will do what I want. Um, but it has been a, quite a journey. This is uh, this is my sort of little repository of AI art that I, I go through. This is my end goal. This is something I really want to work on, and I, and I've actually finally got it working right. I wanted to create virtual patients, and so we have a scenario, and I wanted to generate imagery like this, but I really couldn't. Um, and I've actually learned how to use a 3D modeling package called Daz 3D, which has a tiny bit of AI, but not a lot. The idea behind this is that, you know, I can actually give students a bit of a um, a learning experience. At the end of this, act, they have to fill in a form. You know, we can do a bit of learning from this as well. So they, you know, try and get these in the right spot. I'm really into gamification as well. I think there's a lot to be said for that. So, you know, we've got his ECG up. So that's one thing I do. The other thing I do, and I'm going to close this as I go. That way I know that... Um, yeah, you've seen them. My app, I'll give a link to that down the track. I make a clinical app for people. Um, it's for anyone and anyone who wants it. Um, it's really interesting. It, it's all over the world now. And I get wonderful emails from students thanking me for it, which is, is great. And I said, it's just something I wanted to do. This one, my big, big interest is virtual reality as an educational thing. Now, I wanted to find another one. If anyone's squeamish, just miss the first casualty. She's not very well. But I wanted to create environments like this where I could actually walk through yet, yeah, like I said, she's having a bad day, where students could actually go through and, you know, look at um, look at casualties and that. Um, and the other side of that is, is the gamification. I use, like, this is an AI-created image here. Um, this is one I've done for Scouts where... Um, The idea is they've got to escape this room, enter the code. And this was just a, a, a really quick training thing I did for scouts, you know, where they actually learning about a new awards and new everything. So I'll do one that I know I'll actually pass here, right? And you get a code, a J1. So you go back to the lock and everything's timed. So 
uh, it just creates a bit more of an interesting environment. So that's that's why. And I'm working set of PowerPoint. You're getting deaf by 20 tabs today. Um, and any questions, ask away in the chat, and I'll make sure that um, Michael and Robert follow up. I thought it'd be interesting to talk about the legal implications first. And also, as I go through, I'm going to demonstrate a few other AI apps. Everyone knows about um, ChatGPT. If you're a researcher, grab perplexity. I'm pretty sure this is free at the moment. I lose track. I just asked it this morning, can you give me a few short paragraphs on the current legal status of AI-generated art? And I've been following this, and in the little um, document we'll send out, you'll actually see that there's two great videos on YouTube that explain it really well. It's going through copyright court in the US at the moment. Um, and, you know, mid-journey, which I'll show you in a minute, figuring out where does it sit? You know, basically where they've come up at the moment is you can't copyright AI art unless you really, really change it dramatically enough. But um, yeah, perplexity, and the link for this one's in the actual uh, the, the document you'll get. It is like ChatGPT, but you can actually query the whole internet with it, which is quite good. You get your actual links down here. If you ask it research questions, it'll link to the most current research. It'll also give you other options down here. So you're probably going to see a few other things as we go through this. In the, um, in the AI art world, there's probably a few that are, are really big at the moment. We've got Dali E, which is Dali or whatever they want to call it, which is made by the same people who make chat GPT. Um, and if we just grab any sort of prompt we want and put a prompt in and generate. Oh, I think I must pick the astronaut one. That's okay. I didn't actually, but it'll it'll go through. And it'll no, no, it did actually. So it generated me, you know, that's not bad for what it is, right? Um the prompting level of what you can do, you can create just about anything. Now, this is the amazement thing to me with this AI, right? Like, I went to um, ChatGPT and I loaded six pages because ChatGPT's knowledge finishes at 2021 for GPT-4 model. So I just told it everything about um, mid-journey. And then... After all that, I said, you know, are you ready to start generating prompts? If so, respond yes, five seconds later. And then I said, can you please prompt me to generate a realistic portrait of a beautiful young girl in the style of Rembrandt? First prompt failed. So I went back and I said, you know, this is where the error I got. Bang, we're there. So mid-journey is probably one of the better ones. What I don't like about it, is it's it's in Discord. Oh, that's scary, isn't it? So once you generate a picture, you've got to go searching for it. If you have a paid account, and I just pay as I go for credits, you can have your own Discord channel. You can see in my very first trials of this, I was trying to create virtual patients. It just didn't work. I don't know what's happening with him there or these guys. But then started to get better. I've tried to see what sort of detail we could get in anatomy, still not quite there. But have a look at this. This was that mid-journey um, prompt. So from that one text prompt is what we actually got. And you must admit the images are pretty good, aren't they, uh, of what they've done from that one. That was the actual text prompt there. With prompts, the, the key is as much detail as you can. Now, I built a beautiful little access database to create prompts, and I've thrown it away because I'm just teaching ChatGPT um, things about camera angles, um, how we want it. Then I did try one. Um, I wanted to see if I could get a first aid one out here. So if we go back into our Discord, close that down you'll see that I tried one. And first up, you'll see that I actually got um, blocked because I mentioned injuries. Um, I had to appeal my decision. This is where it's not there for what I want first at the moment. They're a little bit scary how many bees are getting stung, but the boy's getting stung by. But I think 
what has to happen for the to what I want to use is we need to get to a stage where these things can have a medical model behind them, which we're not there yet, but it'll come. Now I'll show you a couple of the different ones here. All you really need to remember is the name if there's something that you want to follow up more. Mid journey is the, um, is the main one and it'll just thousands of images will scroll through. This is just a, a newbie channel, they call it. Um, and anyone and everyone can do there. If you have a paid account, or even if you're just paying for credits, then at least you can create your own channel. There's a couple others here. The Blue Willow server is free at the moment. Um, I've tried Blue Willow and I've got my own Blue Willow server here. That was a similar one with the Rembrandt. You can see close, not, not so bad. And again, if we open in a browser, it's done a reasonable job of generating those pictures. Um, the other one that is there, which is probably more interesting to me was Leonardo. Now it's on a wait list at the moment. You can use it for free. I've actually just got through the wait list, thank goodness. And this is Leonardo AI. I like it because it's not tied to um, Discord to use, it's web-based. So if I go into my own channel, where's my own channel? Personal feed. I would just start having a play. Again, I put the Rembrandt picture in there just to see what we could get. Um, what we tend to do with these is you ask for four, then you can upscale one if you like it, um, change it around. The other one that I believe is really good myself is Stable Diffusion. Now, the interesting thing with Stable Diffusion is that you can actually use it locally. There's a few ways. On my little cheat sheet here, you'll actually find uh, Stable Diffusion local installs. It can also be installed what they call a, a Google Colab. And honestly, this video is two minutes and it just takes two minutes to install it. If you want to install them on local machines, it, there is a, a fair bit of space. The models they download are up to eight to 10 gig a model. The um, sorts of other programs that exist out there like that, um, Diffusers is a Mac program, free Mac program you can use straight away. You can put it in and away you go, it just works. Um, there's another one called Diffusion B, which is, I thought I had open, maybe I don't, let's open that. Diffusion B is another Mac program um, and it's okay. What I need to do with Diffusion B is update the models. I haven't bothered. This is the one that I started the whole thing off when I sent Michael an email about, check this out for the Mac, it's kind of cool. So it's checking the model, um, and then I can actually just do any text I want. It's got some really interesting things, image to image. You can draw a stick figure and actually get it converted into a scene. Um, styles, I want the style to be pen, carving, all sorts of different figures here that we could go through. Um, options, we've got different artists, number of images. So if we just go something really simple, Cute cat. Who doesn't like a cute cat? Very simple prompt. And you'll see it takes a few seconds, but even on this Mac, it's, it's actually pretty acceptable how quickly it generates. This is what we call a positive prompt, and I'll talk about negative ones in a minute. So it's a reasonably cute cat. Um, we could then actually upscale that. We could change it round. We can actually put in the background, things like that. Image to image is where we actually put an image in, enter a prompt and change it. In painting, we add an image, we can paint out parts. Out painting is a great where we can actually put an image in that might be missing the edge and just say, extend that, that image for me. Um, the one that I really do like myself and I install local is probably the one I'm going to keep playing with is Stable Diffusion. If you want to install it on a Mac or a Windows computer, there's a tiny bit of um, command line work, but it's not bad. So when I hit the go button here, 
stable diffusion is going to start working its way through. It'll uh, take a minute or two to do that. I wish I could move that. Can I move that? Oh, can. Beautiful. And as soon as I see that this pops up with the web address, there we go. I can now go into stable diffusion local. Really great thing about this is that this is all local. It's nothing to do with the outside world. You're generating images on your own machine. Um, you can then actually put different models in, in the settings here. You can actually, um, extensions, add new models, things like that. So if I just wanted to check for um, what's available at the moment, and just from that GitHub repository, I could load all of these different ones. Some are very specific for animators, um, some for editing and so on. But if we go back to say our mid journey prompt there for the portrait of a beautiful girl, 5.1, copy, go into our local stable diffusion, paste. We've got that in there. Now, I can't remember. Let me just, I've got a negative prompt that I wouldn't mind just showing you how that works. And I just got in my clunky little access database that I built for it. Um, I was about to go to bed last night and thought, yeah, let's make a database, of course. Negative prompts are things that you want to stop it doing on you. Okay, navigation pane, form prompt. Okay. So this is what I was doing, a prompt generator here. Like I said, with chat GPT, it's probably not um, worth it anymore. Negative prompts take things away. So we don't want it ugly. We don't want um, tiling. We don't want poorly drawn hands. AI's got a really bad habit of doing poorly drawn hands. Sampling steps 20 is okay. You get diminishing returns if you go up to this side. If I went about maybe 50, 50 steps in, in how it generates, it's probably going to be okay. 512 by 512, yeah. Um, batch count, let's just stick to one and I hit generate. Give it a moment. That's pretty acceptable speed, isn't it, considering what it's doing? While we're waiting, one of the things that I, I think is important to notice about all the AI slash generative is they're all extremely revisionary. And, and yeah. most people, until they get into it, don't really understand that it's about editing, editing, revising, 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 and all the way through the process. You're never going to get what you want on a first production. Hence the idea of AI. AI is putting information in and it learns. So you, you're constantly feeding, to, and which means revision, revision, revision. Absolutely. See, that not, as, not bad as a first start. You could throw that into um, uh, Photoshop, could have edited it up and things like that, and you're done. The other thing on that, I've started to look at AI-enhanced tools. This is one I'm about to buy called uh, Luma Neo, it, you know, because I use Photoshop at home, so I've got my own account. It's just such an expense. Like, uh, you know, the arrays tool on this one. We just go over there and arrays. And he's gone. We can get everyone off the beach if we want. And these kind of tools, um, along with a few other ones, I can probably replace for something free that will actually stop me having to use Photoshop and those type of things. The stable diffusion, a bit of an explanation of how it works it diffuses images. Basically, it takes the images learnt from all over the web and breaks them down into component parts. And then diffusion brings them back together on the prompts that you make. Um, does the local one does all the same things, image to image, in painting, out painting, lots of extras. And I've just installed a panorama viewer, which I really don't understand how it works, but it was one of the models. And I think you just throw a video in there. So I've got to look at that. 
artists to study. Um, you want to look at cartoon artists, you can say, I want in the style of this one. Now, artists are finally getting the opportunity to remove themselves from these lists. Some artists love it. And on the music AI, the, um, there's artists now saying that I don't care if you use my voice as long as I get the royalties. Um, so it's going to be how people approach it's going to be very different. And I, I can see a lot of legal court cases coming up over it. But yeah, quite, quite, um, quite interesting what you can do. And this is, a, like I said, a model that is just on my local machine, nothing going out to the web at all. There's so much happening. I'm on the wait list and I was on the Leonardo wait list and now I'm on that. I'm really looking forward to this one for what I do virtual experiences, you actually start typing and it generates the virtual experiences you type in, in a 3D environment. So I can see some incredible, credible benefits for the work I do in virtual reality for that. So I'm hoping I get off, off the wait list pretty soon. Um, I, I, I was sort of, you know, it's sort of art. I had to show you some of the other things you can do with this. You'll see in actually, on the list of things, some of the prompt generators, like the GG, GPT prompt generators, my computer does things like this. If you're writing, you just tell it to act as a storyteller, act as a, a title generator, but you know. So I thought I'd, I'd do a small test of its capabilities with a new chat. Just pick somebody random from the web, go to their website and just post in something like this that said, um, uh, can you get me a poet? act as a poet and write me a short witty poem about Professor Tech. You might have put that on the website, Michael. And then, you know. I'm waiting, I'm, I'm waiting for it to catch up. It's a bit slow here in Emerald. Oh, OK. The videos catch up. But you can use it as a prompt for something like that. And my, one of my favourites is like this, you know, that was great. And I always like to thank it. I think we've got to use manners no matter where we are. So can we do it now into Another One Bites the Dust by Queen and it'll write me a song about Professor Tech. Even got the guitar solo in. So that's a bit of silliness, but that's the kind of silliness you can do. But like I said, to teach a model that isn't up to this date, how to actually um, to make its own mid-journey prompts gives you a bit of an idea where the technology is at. And, and this is really, really just new at the moment, what's happening. Um, and if anyone wants me to try a specific image on, on um, one of these platforms, and mid-journey is going to give us probably the most beautiful uh, images we've got. Um, let me know. I'm really happy to, to try some in there. I, I've gone through most of what I wanted to show. I'm going to talk about prompt generators and things like that. But um, yeah, if you've got to, to use this one here, it's as simple as um, imagine. And then you have your prompt. So if you have a free account on um, Midjourney, it's slow. This isn't actually too bad. It'll, it'll come in a few moments and it'll just pop that up and it'll give me four options. I can pick which one of the four or two of the four I like and then just um, go to town. So here it's starting to draw our images. I thought it was useful to show a few of these in real time. I will show some pictures that I've created um, in a minute. The more, the less prompts you put in, the more you're giving the AI free to actually design what it wants. The more prompting you put in, you'll actually um, create a far better 
uh, image, it may be a lot more suited to exactly what you want. So we're nearly there, 93%. But for people who are visual storytellers, things like that, <clears throat> it's, it's not a bad way to create some nice pictures. Again, I could have specified the dog breed. I could have specified how I wanted the sky, how I wanted the grass, but I just simply asked for a dog running through a field. Gives you a bit of a, a concept of what's possible. Amongst um, yeah, the mid-journey parameter list, is uh, gives you an idea, and this is all on that document that, that you'll get, the basic parameters um, of how you, if you really, really want to go full bore into actually getting it really nice, this is what you can do, like aspect ratios, quality, things like that. And um, yeah, just a, there's, a, there's a couple of those things amongst the resources that are on that. So, you know, um, there's a prompt generator. Hugging Face is a place that has multiple, multiple models that can be in, put in any of the stable diffusion um, graphic packages. So you can just go searching. Another great way, if you want to start, I, I um, wrong one, academic resources. I found this one really good. Um, you can actually look at what people are saying is some of the 100 best prompts, but you can actually have a look at a prompt. And, you know, I want to look what that looks like in my stable diffusion. So we'll go back to text to image, paste that in and generate. And then you can work, um, work on changing around how you want. You can change the nationality, the ethnicity, the culture of the person. Now, there are some real benefits for that sort of thing too. Um, some people know my background. I used to work for St. John for years. And whenever I, somebody left, I'd fill in their job. I've done marketing. I've done a bit of everything. And I learned the hard way about being careful what you put in marketing material, for example. So this is another reason people like this. It's, a non, it's, it's not a person because that person down the track has some issue, um, which I had twice in my career at St. John. The, 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 my favourite one, or, you know, well, the worst blunder was a history and heritage poster I made up, and we made thousands of them for the history and heritage of St. John. It was the 1980s Commonwealth Games in Brisbane, and I had this celebrity um, hugging these two volunteer girls really close. And I thought, that looks great until, I, you know, Rolf Harris wasn't that popular a few years later. So we had to get rid of all the posters. Um, so, yeah, that, there's some benefits in that. And we just said a portrait. We wanted the whole person. We could do that. So what I think I might do for a moment is stop sharing and, and just see if people got some questions on what I've done to start with. Um, are you finding that interesting or useful? You might have. Um, seen this already, but that, that's my experimenting and journey so far with this sort of stuff. That's somebody so, just asked. Dana, Sorry. Someone you, just you asked a question. question first. Yeah. yeah. For Aboriginal pictures, is it culturally sensitive? And I wanted to know the answer to that myself. Is there anyone online who may know the answer? Um, because it's important, you know, we don't, no matter what culture, that we do something that's not acceptable. Um, so, yeah, but it, it can do any, any race, any nationality. The model is so broad. Um, like I said, my only disappointment is it's not in, um, got a medical model behind it yet, but I think it'll come. I think that that will happen and we'll be able to do medical so imagery. So Dino, uh, a little further up, you might not see it, sort of said, well, what if you, the way you did the image of Michael, you put in, say, a casualty hospital image and use that to generate an image. Or in, in your example that you gave of the kid being stung by the bee, maybe you put in an image that you can't use because it's copyright, but, you know, uh, use that as a, as a prompt for it to generate a better image. Absolutely, absolutely. You can do some pretty incredible things like that. And that's what I'm starting to play with. Um, 
I was amazed how easy in the end it was for me to build my 3D people. I can move them around, I can pose them. And that's with a free bit of software called Daz Studio, D-A-Z Studio, if anyone wants to look. And I see Jamie on the line, you can export it straight to Unity, Jamie, or whatever you want, um, which is quite handy as well. So, uh, any in other- to the, um, the cultural sensitivity, um, chat, these things are just gonna generate what you put in. The culture, I would argue the cultural sensitivity comes with what you would choose to put it out. The sensitivity now worries about putting it out somewhere. Yeah. Every, you know, cultural subgroup would be different. So I taught on the Navajo reservation. I live with Navajo culture and in the Navajo culture, certain pieces of art only get produced by certain parts of the culture, right? Yeah. You have to know that in the individual culture. Um, but so what happens is it, it's more about what this will generate whatever you put in, but you're only realizing when you put it out as a representative of wherever you do it, either a unit or a person or a school or a place, you then need to, as the individual, be consulting and interacting with the cultural group you're gonna use this as a representative of. Yeah. I'm interested, but my personal question is, what was interesting is, see, you're in this chat, you're in this artistic place and you're trying to use it practically and you're gonna continue to have dilemmas, right? Because if you put a picture which you want to be out of an actual image and you put it into an artistic scenario, they're always going to artistry it up, which yeah. takes it away from what your goal is because you actually want a practical image in an artistic place. This is trying to generate art and you want not art, you want practical, real. Yeah, yeah. I've had actually more joy with stable diffusion locally because if it's a local model, you've also got the option to turn off the not safe for work imagery. OK, um, which all of the models online have that. Um, so you can't do, you know, pornography, you can't do any exploitive material, but they also really don't like injury or anything like that as well. But you can do it on your local models quite OK. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think it's got a lot of future. I am. Um, I'm. I'm, I, I'm keep up with the AI space and I'll actually share in a minute. I just wanted to make sure we hadn't got too many questions yet, got a few more minutes to show a couple of places if you want to keep up to where you go and how I keep up with it, because there's a lot to keep up with at the moment. Um, but there's one newsletter I get once a week, just gives me most of the information that I want. So I might uh, share again for a little bit and um, yeah. If I get this right, okay. Um, I'll close some of these. A couple of the other ones I did want to show. Dream Studio is the actual stability AI paid program. What's really annoying today is you can see down the bottom there uh, got some technical issues. I was getting the closest imagery to actual a proper anatomy image of a heart that I could have ever got, and I reckon with a bit more training I'll get there. Which doesn't worry me because Dream Studio is built on stable diffusion. So anything they can do, I can actually install in my local stable diffusion down here, and I'll eventually be able to replicate it. So um, I think a lot of these sites are just copying so much um, use at the moment too. They they collapse down. Um, Blue Willow. The links for these are all here. Again, most of these at the moment are in free beta, and Joining them in the free beta stage is uh, a great way because sometimes they let you keep going. Um, other times they'll give you good discounts if you want to. Um, I don't pay for many of these. I pay for mid journey, but I pay as I go. $10 is going to give me 500 images on, on mid journey. Um, Leonardo is one that I think everyone is saying once it, it actually catches up it will be as good as mid journey. And you can see the quality of the images here from a simple prompt aren't bad. Um, again, that's no negative prompts in there. Um, there's a lot more settings. Um, yeah, and you can see like I, I still 150 credits for the free use is still gonna, I think that, that takes about four credits, one credit per picture. So I've got a lot more playing around to do with that. Um, this one here, the CoLab is the simplest to install. I find to use it, it's really 
um, annoying. Um, I like a simpler interface, but, but simply you run things by just running them in this Jupyter notebook and it just creates everything. So it is pretty simple. It is one of the ways we can do it. And I'll get out of there too. Like I said, this is one I really want. Um, some of the other generators and prompts, if you want to try it, and these are all bookmarked as well in that document that you'll get. Um, Mid Journey Prompt Builder. Um, where's this one? Mid Journey Prompt Tool. Start typing, and then you can actually just go through what styles I want and so on. I guess we've got five minutes. I might just quickly show some other academic tools that are in there just for people who may be interested. Um, if we've got some researchers on board, if you haven't found this yet, really go find it, basically elicit. Um, let's just do something CPR versus um, machine CPR. It'll go find us the literature that is out there. We get a few filters. I want to look at stuff published after 2019. I only want to see maybe randomized control trials. I want to look at interventions, outcomes, number of participants. Um, wait till it catches up a little bit. Can be a bit slow this one, but the output is really well worth it. Okay. So we've got our papers there. We can get a quick summary of the paper, you know, any critiques that may have been raised against the paper. Um, we can go through star, the ones we want, unstar, show more then based on that. But when we're ready, we just hit export and we get an Excel spreadsheet that goes across all these columns, outcomes measured, things like that. So that, that's one tool. Another tool that if you have, chat GPT, have a really good look at um, Hey GPT. It's in beta and free at the moment. Um, and they really have, and payday today. So as soon as I, I uh, I'm going to buy one shoes forever, the $36 American. Uh, the beauty of this is like perplexity AI. It's not just chat GPT's knowledge. It's the word, it's the whole knowledge you can then actually do things like load papers in and chat to the papers. Um, if you've got a, a Google API, which I've done, um, things like that, you just whack them in. Great, great bit of stuff too. On the other AI front, LitMaps is one that I'm loving at the moment for some research I'm looking at. Um, seed maps. Ah, I hate this. It signs me out all the time. Oops, try and type well. Use, use of virtual reality training paramedics for mass casualty. That's the paper I'm looking at. I can trace the references from that paper. I can see, you know, what other papers and where they've gone. Um, there's some incredible tools out there. I think we probably should all start to understand how they work so we we can see what we can do with them. Um, Paper Digest is actually a little scary. It's free at the moment as well. These are all listed down there. Load a PDF or um, put in a paper. It'll digest it and summarise the paper for you. So some pretty incredible sort of tech that's coming out and it's coming out on a daily basis. Now, what I was saying about <clears throat> just an explanation of how to use this, I've tried to put up here, if you want to have a go, Dream Studio, sign up, you'll get 300 images. And if you want to keep going, Mid Journey is probably the best, but Blue Willow is okay, Diffusion V is free, Stable Diffusion, local. Um, it is not hard and you can actually follow these videos and talk you through. The CoLab, unless you're really big into CoLab, I wouldn't worry. Leonardo AI is one to watch. Um, that one's okay. 
the two latest videos on what where it sits as far as copyright goes and i'll keep updating these prompt generators for mid journey the detailed parameter list an absolute beginner's guide to stable diffusion um and basically a cheat sheet how to teach chat gpt to create prompts these are the other papers I showed you, the other softwares, Elicit, Perplexity, Litmaps, Hey GPT. There's two versions of Paper G. Um, this one's just a simple, silly one, which is actually at times quite useful if you've got a big long, oh, that's the prompt generator, don't mind me, the long prompt splitter. You actually put long little text in there and it just splits it up for you into what's usable. Um, I didn't want to edit PDF, okay. Future Tools um, is a great site. And this is the one, he's got a great video channel too. And I watch his once a week to, to actually get the most up to date on what's coming out. The other thing is if you go to his site here, you can actually say, I'm looking at things about generative video. It'll show you what's out there. Um, really, really great, great site as far as what it does. His video channel is brilliant. And if you sign up for his newsletter, you get a newsletter once a week with the top five things that he's found. So I know I have gone through a lot of stuff. Um, I hope that's been interesting and possibly some of it's been useful. It's silent, I don't know if I've broken everyone. No, nah, you just went fast and a lot, and, and it's hard to uh, digest it in such a short time. So, yeah, you're doing fine because <laughs> all of our uses of it do not relate to your uses of it. And then we have no. to. End it. No. So, yeah, interesting. It just shows you're entering a, a sort of a new time frame in the world as far as what you're going to find is, and what you're starting to see is these products will just be incorporated. Your graphics package is now coming out with AI ability to AI art inside them to, to over paint, to in paint, out paint. You're going to start to see that you can actually generate an image inside these packages. Um, your web searches will not be the same in the future. There'll be things like perplexity. And I use perplexity now than I use more than I use Google. I find it gives me the information that I want um, and it pulls it out for me the way I want to and gives me the references. So, yeah. Again, I, as I always I tell students, you certainly wouldn't want to um, rely on it to pass anything. You know, you can still identify some stuff's written by AI, I'm sure. And and they're, they're really working to, to do that more, but yeah. So a couple of people asked in the chat, Daryl, uh, did you want to drag your PDF in the chat or you can email it and I'll, and I'll I will um, try and drag, drag it into the, the chat. mailing list or both. Um, and I also mentioned to a few people in the chat uh, and I noticed a couple of people have done it. If you go to list.cqu.edu.au, you should be able to subscribe to the Telcop mailing list. I don't send a lot of stuff to the mailing list, but we do send a recording when it's ready. Um, and also this list as well that Dale's providing, I'll send that to the mailing list as well, assuming he's okay with that. Oh, I'm fine. I, I, I'm a believer in everything that I do or make, I want to share with everyone. I have some really interesting things on the way. The um, escape rooms, um, they're the ones that you saw there are made in the software I love, which is Lectora. Everyone knows I love Lectora because it'll make me anything. But I'm actually making templates in H5P. I don't have the beautiful timers and things like that. The other thing that I will drag in, I'm not sure if I should or I shouldn't, the story behind the script for the chat GPT to teach it how to draw, um, I had to sign in to get it, but there's no cost, there's no anything, he just wants to harvest your email address. So I think it's probably fair, he's already harvested mine, I think it's probably okay for me to drag that into the chat, the PDF. Um, it's not like it was a paid, I wouldn't share a paid thing, but um, if you put this script into chat GPT, you'll teach it how to do prompts. Now, one thing I meant to say is that even though it's a mid journey prompt, it works in stable diffusion, it works in DALI, it works in, you know, Leonardo AI. 
So, you know, again, you could then tailor it. And that's the beauty of, that's where I see the real beauty of chat GPT is. For me, I don't use it to study. I use it to like this sort of stuff or I use it for, um, if I'm reading a paper and the statistics do my head in, I just put those statistics in and say, can you give me a bit of a simpler explanation of those statistics? So I think I've almost made it to time properly and not gone over. Is there any, any questions anyone might have? Please ask away. I, I'm trying to, if, you, if I've missed anything in the chat, can you let me know? Um, programming is 3D printing with pencil. I will share one thing just because I, we mentioned this to Michael. If anyone, um, I bought a few new printers recently. I, I do a few weird things as people probably know, but um, printing is one that I just love. I, I, I did that when I had a period where I um, was off from everything after getting part of my foot chopped off because of infection. So it was just a fun way to uh, keep myself amused. And I've, like I said, I think I own about 15 printers now, which is quite sad, but I, I've downsized mostly to a couple. And if this is the printer, Michael, and, and everyone, if you're wanting a printer, get rid of my access database. This, these here, the Bamboo Labs, just phenomenal. So I actually have one of each. I've got the PIP, which is the, the cheaper version. And I've got the full, I backed this in its Kickstarter days. Four filament rolls on top, but you can actually put four of these together to have 16. Um, the acceleration, the bed leveling, everything um, is just the most phenomenal printers. Like I said, they're quite disrupting the market now. The LiDAR scanner to check the resolution of your prints. And like, as far as price goes, they're, they're not bad for the style of printer. Like cost me more than my first few cars did. But um, in the scheme of really high end printers, it's like the same price as a Prusa. The thing that I love about them is the price of the accessories. Like I can put a whole new hot end in one of these for $14. Like that's unheard of in this sort of market. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bonus thing for anyone who's interested in printings. I can't rave about them enough. They're the most amazing printer. I, um, I print some very random things. At the moment, I'm printing a set of wound trainers. Um, I've printed a tourniquet arm and I've printed all these wound trainers. And to give you a, an idea, the wound trainers I print are worth about $700 each to buy and I'm producing them for $5 each. That's with the syringe to pump the blood through them and everything, so, yeah. Well, I hope that was useful for everyone. It's nice to see some people here. I only ever come out once or twice a year, don't I, Michael? But um, I will, if people think it's a great idea, I thought I might keep that AI tools updated with what I find, what I discover, and just send out, like I really wanted to share those um, academic research tools. You know, we've got such good academics at our uni and somebody wants to take me on a research project, I'm really keen, just to let you know, but. Um, <laughs> I, I, funny, funny, Susan on the chat just said, can you print some oral health demos for me? Um, oral that's health actually, demos. Yeah, yeah, she, oh, well, he's looking for you, Susan. He's already got some ideas. Um, just to let everyone know, though, Daryl, even though he said he only comes out once or twice a year, he actually gets around a bit helping out various people with these kinds of interventions. I think Robert implied that at the beginning. He, he spends a lot of time helping out. So, yeah, I, I think he'd be happy actually, to see. I'll, I will share one more then, hey. I, I, I will show you something that I did in the oral health. I was in Rocky a couple of weeks ago and I brought this up with me. Um, yeah, here we go. My wife's auntie is a dental something or other. That's, that's good, isn't it? And anyway, so I made these. Um, I've got a set here at the moment, which is just waiting on the teeth. But these things are huge like they are uh 250 across and i put them in a little box but they've got all the different teeth type things if that makes sense and this was all printed on my bamboo labs 
so you can actually put bridges different things in them i did a bit of a redesign to make it the tongue lifts off and i hide spare teeth under it um they're the sort of things that you can actually to do with that printer so is that sort of suit in the oral hygiene type thing oh that's amazing daryl um, yeah I um yeah we do an oral health I'm work, I work for the diploma of nursing so you know us well probably yeah and, where are you based um, so I'm in I'm in Sunshine Coast but attached to Bundy and Brisbane's and um we have a, a set of skill set that we have to demonstrate and the students have got a piece of paper with a mouth on it really well so that this would... this set I was just making for fun. <laughs> So I'll leave it somewhere in Brisbane. I'll print the teeth this afternoon. I just, I just love it. I, I, I may, I put magnets under the tongue. So like I said, the tongue can come out and you can hide spare teeth under me. I was going to make a big toothbrush for it as well. So yeah, but um, yeah, I, I actually, I redesigned it to fit in this tough case. So the whole thing goes in this beautiful little tough case to cart away. Um, I, I like to feel I'm a bit of a jack of all trades master and none, as you can see, but I do love my 3D printing. It's just incredible what we can do with it. That's clear. And I, uh, yeah, I should drop you a line and see if you can uh, throw some things our way, maybe. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, and I made for Jordan's um, auntie also this teeth cup which is the most disgusting thing you've ever seen but she wanted it it's a cup made of teeth with a saucer made of teeth so i guess if you're into that sort of thing it's probably okay yeah yeah well thank you everyone for your time i um i've enjoyed it like i said i enjoy sharing what i find okay um and i will work michael the best way for me to keep sharing this probably that document I'm thinking of actually building a web database behind it so we can keep it a bit more up to date. Oh, and I do have to show Michael one more thing and everyone, you know, like I said, I'm into random things. And this one, Michael, and, and everyone's going to get asked if they want to help me on this. I was sitting there one night and I decided, can ChatGPT build me a website? So I thought, hmm, it's got to be worth a go and zoom meeting so what i want to do michael as you know is i'm really keen on the steam stuff the stem stuff so this is steam and coffee because it puts two of my favorite things together um but all the text i actually have been going through saying i've got a i've got a chat on chat gpt make me a nice tagline for my website um, for each of the areas of the website. And the idea at this site is I'm going to be just posting blogs on, you know, artificial intelligence. The big one for me is 3D printing, but I've, I'm asking different people if anyone's got an interest. Uh, I'm not sure if Desley's online, but I've sort of conned her to help me with the maths. And Michael, I think you and I need to just do the coffee shops on here. But then again, that, that just shows you this, the text is all basically with my guidance done by um, ChatGPT. Nice. That's amazing, Daryl. Yeah, I'm going to hand over to Robert to finish us off. Yeah, well, we're basically wrapping it up. We're at the one hour mark. Um, so we want to stick to. Thank you, Daryl, for your presentation. Thank you so all good. for attendance um, and, and people coming and keeping our, our COP going. Thank you so much. And we'll be sending you out for our next one. We'll be sending out information on the next one soon. So thank you everyone for coming. And thanks, Daryl. Give him a big round of digital clapping. <laughs> awesome. Thanks Lo a lot, Daryl. Lovely to see everyone. Hey, I'm, I'm actually holidays this week. And did anyone notice in my chat GPT, there was a thing, Brisbane to Byron? Uh, my, my wife uses chat GPT now. And I just saw that pop up and she was saying, we should go for a drive. So I've got a funny feeling on my day off tomorrow. I know where I'm going. <laughs> sounds good all right all right bye everybody bye daryl thank you so much no worries. see you later